Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe Glines from The Automator. And today I have a guest speaker here, Jean Alain. Jean's led a lot of webinars for us. He also has the amazing tool, Quick Access Pop-Up. This is a new project he's been working on. And I'm really excited because I've seen it and played with it a little bit. It's in beta testing and that's kind of what we're doing here too, is to, it's a great time. You know, if you're a beta tester, you get to play with the tool early. And because he's still developing stuff, he's willing to listen to what you your comments are and take them much more closer to heart, right? And maybe improve the tool based on what you you try and say and, and see. So, yeah. uh, Jean, thanks and for I really it. appreciate. I really appreciate the uh, input from users. They uh, always have good ideas. I cannot always do everything at the at the moment, but <laughs> but there's a list we could show maybe a little later the website where uh, you can follow the development of uh, this new tool. Let's get into it. Yeah. So that's um, maybe if I just explain from where the ID come for this tool that is called Quick Clipboard Editor. Uh, probably it happens often for you too that you have something in the clipboard and you want to paste it somewhere, but not exactly uh, with the content. It has to do some, to have to do some editing in this content before pasting it. And uh, the destination of this content, it's not a good editor, so it's a website, and, you know, a place where you, it's not easy to edit this content. So what you typically do, you will open an editor, a text editor, notepad, or something better, paste it, do the changes, and then copy it, and then go back to the, the target application and finally paste it. And having to do that so many uh, times, I, I was always wondering, wouldn't it be possible to just open the clipboard, edit the text in the clipboard, and then paste it? And it was not as simply done as it is simply said, but I finally got a way to kind of uh, uh, give access to the content of the clipboard, give good tools to edit this content and make it easy to take content to the editor, from the clipboard and then from the editor to paste it. Having all this kept in the clipboard history, there's a clipboard history inside this tool. So it's a quite interesting, I'm very, I'm very excited with, uh, with this uh, new tool. Well, what, what I would also say, Jean, is because uh, some people might tune out when they just hear clipboard because they don't normally think of doing something like what you do in the clipboard because there's no tool to do it. Right, like we often take our stuff, we need to convert it in one way or another, or transform it somehow, and then we're ready to do something with it. And that you're doing that all like within the clipboard, or it, it's. I mean, I know you'll share your tool yeah. here, but Th some people might of... get. If I was going to say, because a lot of people, when you think, oh, I don't, but I don't use the clipboard for that. You, we, you should be right. It's just not something that we can easily do, and that's what your tool is solving. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, clipboard tools already on the on the market. Okay. Uh, clipboard history. Uh, some of them allow you to edit the the clips that you get from the clipboard, but nothing as direct as what I wanted. So that's what I developed uh, this uh, this tool. So I give you a quick uh, sneak preview of this tool, uh, Joe. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let me just open Notepad to have something where I can paste some content. So we have Notepad here, we have this tool here, Quickly Board Editor. Uh, you can make this window always on top. So that's I'm, what I'm often doing. So it's easy to see what's in the clipboard and do some work uh, with uh, another application. Let me just move this. Hey. For those that haven't realized, Jean's native language is French. So his notepad's in French. Yours doesn't have to be. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So let me just copy some text from Notepad in this text file here. So I select text here and you will see that as soon as I copy it, it will be of course copied to the clipboard and then immediately visible inside Quick Clipboard Editor here. So that's uh, as soon as you do some changes in the clipboard, we're using copy, cut, uh, using something like going into your file system and just copying a file here, it will copy the path of the file that you copied to uh, in Explorer to the clipboard and then to uh, the editor. And when it's there, you can then easily edit the text. So let's say I will just add something here. Oh no, just before, let me just explain that. You see um, at, uh, here at the, the top, a toolbar where you set the font that will be used to display your content the size of the text, uh, always are on top or not, word wrap or not. So depending on what, what type of 
text you have, you will uh, prefer to have this word wrap or not. And invisible character will show you the tabs or the space or the return that are in your file uh, when you are in uh, read-only mode. You cannot edit with this being displayed at this time at least. So you have this and you have these buttons at the bottom here where you can paste the content of what's in the clipboard. So let's go to an empty uh, notepad application window. So I can paste it. It will be automatically pasted to, uh, to the application. And because I have this option here, keep the editor open after paste. So I will just change this option to, uh, to, re to remove this option. So if I do the same here, paste, it will close the editor and I can continue to work in my file. So it depends on what you have to, to do. If you want to do many changes, you may wish to have this being kept open. So that's space. Now, when you change the text, not jello, but hello. So now the copy button become uh, enabled. Before that, if I just undo it, you see it's not, it's disabled. So there's nothing to copy to the clipboard because this is, is this is what is actually in the clipboard. But if I change the, the content, then this button come, becomes available and it allows me to copy the content to the clipboard if I want to use it elsewhere from the clipboard or cancel if I want to return with the content currently in the clipboard or of course close that will cancel maybe if some changes has been done and not saved. So these are the, the, the main buttons that you will use. There's a status bar here that is pretty useful here Particularly the first section here tells you in what state, in what mode actually is uh, the editor. So now it is synced. So it means that any, anything that I copy to the clipboard will be reflected to, uh, to the editor. You can also be, and as soon as you modify the content, it will change to editing. When it is in editing, it is not synced anymore because you don't want if you copy something here, that you would like to use in the editor, you don't want it to replace what you are currently editing. So I can copy something, it's not visible here. I could paste it if I wish, whoops. I could paste it if I wish. And then when I'm ready, I can paste it elsewhere or copy it, but still I'm in the editing mode. If I can sell, it takes me back to the sync mode where the content is uh, updated in the editor when I change something in the clipboard. You can also navigate in the, the clipboard history. That's the most recent change that I've done. And that's what I was waiting to complete before doing you this demonstration and asking for beta testers. I wanted beta testers to be able also to test this feature. So there is this button here, these two buttons at the bottom that will navigate. Let me just close the other windows for now. that will navigate to previous contents of the clipboard if I click on the left side. And on the right side, you can return to just come back to eventually the first item where it will become disabled because there's no more history clips to, to uh, return to. When you are in an history clip, it is written here history. And again, as soon as you edit the content, it will change back to editing. And then if you want to go to the previous item, it will first ask you if you want to discard the changes before continue to the previous item. So this way you see the history one item at a time, but often if you know you have something in the clipboard and maybe that was the 20th thing you change a few minutes or, or hours ago, you can right click on this button and it will show you by default the 15 last items that you change, uh, that you add in the clipboard. You can change in the, in the options, you can increase this value if you prefer to have a longer menu. But then I can select here, hello Joe, and it will, of course I'm now in mode in, I'll just cancel, hello Joe, no, oh, a bug. Yeah, that's something that has to be tested. I'll just, uh, to be fixed. So that's why it needs to be beta tested. Yeah, and right. let, me just take, <laughs> let me just take another way of getting to the history is by the file menu here. And you have the history submenu. 
and it will probably not work uh, because it's the same menu that you have here. So I have something to look at and let's take substring here. Here it worked. So why didn't it work previously? And when you navigate in the history, uh, you can copy to make the history clip become the current clipboard content. So that's what I would do uh, here. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the, the history. And so there are three modes here. Synced, where the content is updated. History, when you are browsing the history clips. And editing, when you are changing something. The remaining is quite standard for an editor on what line, what character, what position in the text you are, how many bytes are selected. That's what will be reflected in the next part of the status bar. So now you, you see how you can see the content of the clipboard uh, before going to what you can do to change the content, to edit the content. I will just show you another way to get content to the clipboard. So let's say you have some text here. I will just turn off the always on top. And I have here something like Something like this. Uh, and I don't know if you're like me, sometimes I type a very long sentence before realizing that, oh, I was in caps, so everything is inverted, so I have to revert this. So let's see how, in how many clips, how many clicks you can change it. So there's a hotkey that will take the content of what is selected in your application and take it directly to the editor. By default, you could change it if you prefer. It is Control, Windows, Copy. So first I'll copy the text. Control, Windows, Copy. It will open the editor, showing the content that I've just uh, highlighted. And here, there's a hotkey. I will sh show you the, the full uh, menu, but there's a hotkey. Control, Alt, U. Uh, not U, I, I have to check. I don't remember to toggle control alt j so let's say that you don't need to use the menu if you remember the the hotkey control alt j will reverse the capital and then i could use paste that will paste the content back to where i was i will turn off this option here just not to keep this open so you see that just by three hotkeys i copy the content i transform it and then i paste it back and i can continue to work so that's what also I've improved. You've seen a previous release of this application. There was a lot more clicks to do changes to the clipboard. And I tried to streamline this as much as possible using hotkeys or mouse shortcut. So that's changing the, capi the, the, the case of the text is one of the things that you can do. I'll just show you some other things that you can do and I'll do it. I'll just take this file here like this. <clears throat> oh, it's not safe. It doesn't need to be saved. Okay, so um, I'll copy it to the to the clipboard and to the editor. And now let's say that what I want to keep in this text here is just this section here, the size of the file and the name of the file. So of course you could do this and delete this and delete this and delete and. When you have five lines, that's not that bad. But when you have you have 50 lines, or hundreds of lines, it's crazy. So you have to find another way to do that. So if we know what is the position of where I want to have the text to be kept and what is before removed, I know that the position here is 33. So I can go here in edit and substring. So this will keep or remove a substring from each line of what is in the editor. And here you could say, I want to copy to, to keep from the start or for, from a given position, which is 33. That's the, the example I just tested before. So from position 33 and up to the end of the line or for a given number of character or a, a given number of character before the end of the text, uh, to the beginning of a given text. So the, if there's a exclamation mark, I could say to the beginning. And if there are three question um, exclamation mark, I, we could say up to the end of this with an offset if we wish, a little more before, a little after. But for now, we will just keep from the position 33 to the end. And we could remove the, the text that is after 33 or keep it. 
in my example, I want to keep it. So that way, what we have is the size and the file name. That's one of the things that we can do uh, using the edit the substring uh, command. There's also the insert string that is quite the opposite. It is to add something somewhere in the line. So let's say that I want at position five to insert to insert the word bytes. So insert at position five. It's already written because I just tested it Joe before doing the video. So I add byte, but it could be octet in French if I want anything from I can add, add it from the start or at the end or from a given position or for, from the beginning or the end of a given text. So it's not necessarily at the same place. It can depends on the current content of each line of the clipboard. For now at character five, it insert bytes here between this and this. So these are the commands here that you have in the under the edit menu, in addition to the standard cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, and select all. Now, I want to sort this list of files by the size of the files, having the largest file at the beginning. So I can go to the sort menu. If I select sort, a quick sort, control Q, it will sort alphabetically. So that's common sort, and it's easy to, to do it only in one, uh, one click or one key keystroke. But what I want to do is more complex, is to sort descending order, of these numbers here. So I go in sort option and I have a lot of possibilities to sort. I want to sort reverse. I want to sort numeric values. If I don't select it, the, the six here will be, you know, the numbers will be treated uh, not as numbers, but are as letters and it can uh, right. affect the result. So I want to specify that my sort criteria will be numbers. If it was text, I could say if it is case sensitive or etc. I can sort from a given position. I can sort from the last backslash. So if there's a list of file, I can sort by the file name that are somewhere after the last, last backslash of each line. Um, let me come back to this for other the other features. So reverse order numeric. So we have six, 863 here, um, the first one, and you see the, what else? You can change the case of the text. We've seen that with the toggle case that we've seen before, but you, I can also select what I've shown, what did transform the whole content of the clipboard. But if you select some lines, some a part of the, the editor, the command that you choose will be applied only to this text. So now I could change uppercase for these two lines. It will change the uppercase only for these two lines here. Uh, you can, you have various uh, ways to change the case, upper, lower, title, sentence. You can try these various and toggle that we've seen before. Uh, I just did toggle. So that's uh, the, the change case. Before we go to convert, I will just go back to something I forgot to mention, Joe, that's one of your requests. An example of what you can influence when you test something oh, and right. give feedback to the de developer. Have you seen the last option here? Okay. By line length. So that was your ID because you often do, I don't know uh, in what context you do sorting by line length, but it's now possible to do that. So let's sort by line, line length. And you see that this is the first one, the second. Uh, so that's not a very visible example. We could have more differences be between each line, but you can do it and also um, sort reverse length. When you select a, a given option, it may disable the other options that are not applicable uh, oh, okay. in this case. Nice. So here we have the longest first and the smallest at the end. So let's say that I want, for example, to change the extension of from .ini to .ini backup or BK. So I can, of course, find, but we'll just see find and replace. So .ini change to .ini just to be more visible. You can choose if you want to match case or not. I want in this case. You could also use regular expressions. Uh, just newly added, something that needs to be well tested. 
So now just a simple find and replace. I was at the end of the file, so it didn't find and replace because it was already finished. So let me just do it again. We're keeping the, the existing values. So I want to replace the first one. I don't want to replace the second one. And I want to replace all the remainings. I click all and it replaces everything, everything else. So that's the find and replace. Now let's see the convert menu where there's a lot of stuff to test because uh, these are the needs that I found from my own usage or by looking at what developers, mainly developers, need to convert the, the text they have in given diff different format depending on where they want to use it. For example, if you have text that you want to put in a URL, you have to convert this text to encode this text for URL because, for example, space are not allowed in URLs parameters, so you have to replace space with percentage 20. We've seen, you've seen a lot of percentage 20 in the URLs it's because this is the encoded format. So let's say that I want to add this to a URL. I need to encode this. So what I can do is just use this menu here that will replace every space with percentage 20, replace the end of line with carriage return line feed codes, so all this make this string being ready to be added to a URL and being well recognized by the, the website, the script that will receive this URL at the other end. On the opposite, if you have something that you receive that is this weird text and you know it comes from a URL, but you just want it to be reverted to the normal text, so you could have, can of course do the opposite, so to decode, and it will return to the text that is for human reading instead of uh, URLs. So these are two examples. There's a lot of other examples and I will refer you to the website where they are all described and I can show you right now. So help will take you to the website of Quickly Board Editor and there's a section about convert here and I'll just show you without demonstrating it could be too much time but you can encode for XML. So some character that cannot be used in XML file as is, for example, the ampersand, it has to be converted to ampersand AMP um, semicolon. All these characters has to be encoded. So you can encode a string for XML or decode an XML string to normal text. You can do the same with hexadecimal. So for example, hello here, these are the values for each characters of the string. Sometimes more rarely, less often, but something you can need to do. This one here is my own way of looking at the ASCII codes of a content. So if I have this here, convert list ASCII code, it will take every character and give the ASCII code after. Not something that you would use elsewhere, probably. Just you want to see it. And when you've seen it, you can just reverse on list and it will take it back to what it was. Encoding HTML entities. So for example, if I have this string here for uh, to use in the web page, I need to encode the e acute here because Montreal in French, you use e acute, but on the web it's better to encode these uh, foreign language or these non-English language characters. Same thing for the, the line break here. So it will be replaced with e acute and with BR for the line break. Encoding for PHP, there are two types of encoding, EHP, double quote, single quote. I won't go into the details for that, but it is supported here. Encoding for auto -add key. So let's say that you have this auto -add key version one. If you know auto -add key, you know that it's now being trans transited from version 1.1 to version two. In version two, there's not anymore these type of variables where you put the percentage to identify your variable. So you will need to convert it to the expression uh, format and you can do it that way. So encode var to expression. So it will replace this with strings and concatenation, your variable number. And you could do the opposite if you need to return to the var. So this will 
take you back to this. It will not convert in every situation and you could not do that on a whole file, but just for pieces of text, it's a quick way. Instead of doing it by yourself, you can just do it from this command here. And there are auto at key special characters also. So for example, end of line uh, will be replaced with actual carriage return line feed. And uh, this tab special key will be replaced by an actual tab in the, in the text. So these are the various ways you can just, and this is mostly for, I would say developers or some more techie users the other option here are for every type of users, those manipulating a lot of text, the writers, people that collect information and try to summarize that will use a lot of things from the clipboard. So that's for all users, but this one here is more for people like you and maybe your audience for the automator to do more advanced uh, technical stuff. Yeah. And let me just finish. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, just, I was gonna say these specifically, the other stuff is really good. This is what really pops in my mind when I say we don't normally think about using the clipboard because you can't do that in the clipboard. But with your tool, you're you're basically making it easy to convert this stuff without having to have a third party tool to go into, do your search, replace, do your manipulation, and then bring it back. So yeah, it's yeah, very cool. And and uh, yeah, and you can find these options. Most of these things you can find them and, and many more certainly in, in editors like notepad plus plus or site or things like that or websites are, as well yeah we also but here it's very convenient convenient right. to just open the clipboard do the change and then paste it and and, and you're done so it will take uh, 10 seconds instead of 30 seconds or one minute for each of these changes just for people who do this a lot it's it's a real time saver and yeah. more important it's all because to your point john some editors will have a few of those, but often they don't have all of them. And that's where also, if you have something that you convert a lot, mention it now, be a beta tester, mention it to John, and maybe he'll add it to his tool. Especially in the convert here, it is has to be tested in, in more right. various situations than what I've done, and, and it can be uh, improved. It can be more better uh, grouped. Maybe there will be some menus or just to make it easier to uh, to find. Finally, there are options. You can select what hot key will be used to open the editor. By default, it is Control Middle Mouse or Shift Windows V, if you use the keyboard. To copy from an application to the editor is Control Windows C. The opposite is Control Windows V, or click on Paste here, of course. Uh, you can decide if you want to launch the keyboard uh, with Windows. I recommend doing it. And you can decide if you want the editor to, to be displayed when you launch the editor. That, that's something that you could turn off if you don't use it always. And for now, there's no options dialog box with all the options being well displayed, something I'll do later. But for now, you can open the quick access, the quick clipboard editor, uh, any file, settings file, where there's a lot of options here that you can change if you wish. And they are all explained they are all explained in, on the website in a section called settings. So if you click description of setting values, you have all the values with their default value and what you can change to make it work in a way that you would prefer. So that's, uh, and there's this website. And, and now about beta testers, uh, if you want to give feedback, there's a forum here. It's the same forum that I'm using for quick access pop-up. So it's a section of this forum that is called Quickly Board Editor Forum, where you can see what is the current uh, release here at the top. So for now it's version 0.3.4 that I'm showing to you. It will be updated with new releases here and you can always download them. With each release, I will put the, 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 what, the what's new in this release. And there's a link to download the new release here. And you can post your suggestions here. So I received a bug report recently, a uh, suggestion about uh, non-text items. And or for here, it, it is mostly a support question. For suggestions, there's another section here called wishlist suggestions, where we can discuss should it do it that way, that way? And when it is defined 
And when it's clear for me what I can do, I will take the ID here and create an item in the wish list items sections. So these are all the things I will do in the next, during the weekend, <laughs> during yeah. the next month, probably. I do not guarantee I'll do all of these. And so it's, I have my own way of prioritizing something I will do immediately because it's a no brainer. We need it. Yeah, good idea. Let's do it right now. Other things are more complex, will take more time, may have side effects, uh, breaking something else. So that's the kind of thing I'm thinking about, about selecting the, the items that will be done. And to know what is being in progress, you click here and you see the item that the moved one are just has been released yesterday. So they, they have been moved to the done section, but I kept a link here for a few days. And these items here are the two remaining items in progress so that I'm working on and that will be in the next release. And when changes are done, they will be in the, the, in the done section. So you can use the support forum here to post here. I'm not logged in this, but you have a post uh, or new thread button here. If you want to report something or ask a question, if you want to make a suggestion, you can do the same in the wish list editor in the wish list section. And I'm happy to reply. I usually reply the same day or the day after with uh, comments or acknowledgement of uh, the bug report or the, the suggestion. Very cool. Well, there's a lot of stuff, you know, when Isaiah was on with us as well, he was just saying, yeah, there's, he'll be a big user as well. It, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of us do very frequently having a tool to make it easy really help. So, and I'm really excited. It's, you know, I, I did quick access pop up by looking at a small, very small script on the AHK forum. And I say, oh, wow, that's cool to have the opportunity to build a menu that will pop up anywhere and change folders. That was the only thing that was done by that tool at that time. And I just started to improve it because I said, oh, it would be cool to have sub menus. So I add sub menus and you know, I, I added things and things. And I received so many good feedback and suggestions that it became much more than folders pop up. That was the name at the time, but it became quick access pop up because it gives you access to application, documents, links, uh, features, uh, snippets, a lot of things that you have now. And all of this come from IDs, from users, and from you, Joe. Snippets is, was largely uh, inspired by your uh, your feedback on the application. So I hope to have the same kind of, maybe it's more niche as an application compared to quick access pop-up, but I have to have the same, have the same kind of exchange with users to, to make this tool evolve. John, I would say it's more niche in the, Group of people doing that stuff. However, what they do with it is, you know, really going to be broad. So it's it's a smaller user base. However, they're going to get into it and really love it and want to have a lot of the other conversions in there and stuff. So, yeah. yeah I, and I think it's the time, kind of tool that you will show to your colleagues and your friends. Oh, mercy. Yeah. I think it's cool. So if you show it, it, maybe it will take, it will attract other users. So seriously, when I was at TI, I was working with the, I, I wasn't in IT, but I worked with them because they supported us and we would do stuff with our web pages and the people, we would render a page and then they were manually doing that URI encoded decode. Um, and, and, and I'm like, I hear, I have a hotkey. I can select it and I hit a hotkey and mine parses it just like yours does because mm -hmm. I used it so much. I had one for each one. I still have them. I still use them, but there, I mean, people who do this all the time don't use tools like this that can just crazy save them a yeah. great amount of time. So I do think once they, they see it, they're going to love it. Hey, Jean, so what are your plans for the future with the tool? The one request I will receive shortly from your, your friends, beta testers, that will become beta testers, will be to have a way to create your own kind of macro or something to have just a hotkey that will produce a given, take the content. Absolutely. Yeah. change the case, paste it back and just in one click instead of three or four as you could have to do now. Sure. So I will develop something, but I just don't want to redo, redo in quick clipboard editor all the engine that creates a menu that handle hot keys that already exist in quick access pop-up. So my idea is to have a new kind of things that you can add in quick access pop-up that will be called something like clipboard editor feature or something like that, 
where you will be able in quick access pop-up to say, I'll create a kind of macro or a sequence of action that will be executed, not by quick access pop-up, by, but QAP will just send messages, send commands to quick clipboard editor to do something for you. So it will just save me from having to develop again all the menu management or quick hotkeys management that are already working very well in quick access pop-up. So I think that these two applications will be able to work together to make something that will be again, more uh, more efficient. So it's not for this weekend, <laughs> but uh, something that will be uh, certainly on the path for the next uh, month. Yeah, so in my brain, when you were saying that, I, I totally get it. It's the, in QAP, you can launch a program from command line and pass it parameters, right? And have it go in a certain way. And that's what you're saying is like, why recreate the wheel and bring that yeah. all into this tool? Just have it and work. because I control both parts, the QAP right. sending a, a request and the application QCE receiving the request, I can encode it in a way that will give access to all or almost all the features from a quickly board editor inside the QAP. So it will be Absolutely. fun to develop and fun to use. Of course. Well, because I, I totally agree. There's going to be a lot of people who they repeat the same thing over and over and over. And for them they do want a hotkey and that makes a lot of sense, but I, I get your point of, let's just go ahead and use something you already have for that. So very cool. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Joe, for your time taking a look you at bet. that. And th thank you for your users. If they they take a minute to just take a look at that, you can download it very easily. It is safe. It is a certificate and um, signed. So it's very it's a safe download for you. Yeah, more importantly, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you, John. This is, it, it, I know we were really excited for it. We're, I'm looking forward to playing with it. So is Isaiah, and I'm sure a lot of other people are too. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.